Welcome everyone to another short video. Uh, this is not a sponsored video. This just happened where we ordered something. We paid for this with our own money. If someone wants to sponsor this video, they are free to contact us. The major reason why I sometimes order things at Amazon is that as business purchase in Europe or Germany, the return policies are often different. So if something is not as in awesome or compatible condition or whatever or low quality or something as a business purchase i can easier return it with this company than with many other local stores and things like this so so much for this disclaimer we got ourselves here some new stock to play with one things i wanted to try out some more quality thermal compound in one of the next videos so that's what this is for otherwise we only have some older more normal stock from yesteryear so future video coming about this but this hard disk somehow does not look so newly packed strange let's see how this goes as you may have seen in the videos from some other month where we had some hardware failure mostly of hard disks but i also used the chance to swap a nearly decade old atom board in the router with some more beefier amd phenom board so i soon also have to replace this currently empty box one of our test setup things with the new board this is also upcoming I'm currently waiting for the slightly improved AMD Ryzen, this 1.5 generation Ryzen 2000 something that is probably coming out next month or so. Anyway, I wanted to prepare and swap some things around and we need some hard disk. This are 4 terabyte serial ATA for some RAID. And another one, um, as you will see in a minute, the cases are not so big, so I need I thought this was 2.5, this is strange. This was advertised as 2.5 inch. Hmm, apparently this is not 2.5 inch. Maybe this is why it was already returned and the spec looks old. You really need to proofread each e-tailer listing. Of course this case is only one slot for 3.5 inch. And the new power supply. Because the first hardware failure that I did not make a video about was the power supply. So I took out the power supply from another test unit. So we are missing a power supply also. And this is a fully modular one. So these are the small compact cases that I often use for some server setup here. So that you can also stack nicely to clusters of this. The Silverstone 5 or something cases are in the meantime 7 or maybe even nearly 10 years old. But they still produce them here Silverstone. So this is a... So this is a currently empty one where I took the mainboard out for the router replacement and this is where we will install a mini ITX AMD Ryzen than the other months. The cases are relatively nice. I only wish they would have had hot swap hard disk space but you can't have everything. However we are not swapping the hard disk so often so it doesn't matter so much and I rather have a compact slim case and the ones with RAID or hot swap base also often do not leave so much space for the main board and you can unfortunately also not get so many hard disks in there as there's only room for a two and a half and a three and a half drive and i also misuse this floppy cd-rom slot at the top that is not really supposed for hard disk but you can screw in there a 2.5 inch at least hard disk and um, using normal locations and screws you can get three hard disks in there and uh, if you don't use a PCIe slot you can put another NVMe plus potentially other M2 SSDs on the mainboard in case your mainboard has one. The reason I ordered this fully modular power supply is that we never had one and I wanted to see it. I'm not sure how well it fits into the case because I think there's not really so much space between the power supply and the hard drives here so this may be really tight. We will take a look in a minute, but um, this adheres some maybe nearly four millimeters plus the plastic of the connector and the cable is otherwise only going out here to the side. So this consumes a little bit more space. However, the reason I wanted this is for this testing of vintage motherboards and such. And I thought it's neater to have here just one cable to plug in and also to directly connect hard drives because I have the issue that this other SFX power supply does not have old-fashioned Molex connectors for old-fashioned hard drives and floppy drives. 
So my thinking was that it's more convenient with this one to plug in the AT power converter cable here and um, directly connect some hard drives. Here it comes with cables. So, and I see there, I think they're already old-fashioned Molex connector things. So that is the thinking about this and I will also try to see if it fits in here. However, even if it doesn't really fit in here, I will leave it as a freestanding power supply for test setups. For most of you this video may be not be that interesting. However, if you do not like some companies opening like latest Apple trash can Mac Pros or something, just do it yourself, build your own Linux, Windows or Mac compatible PC kind of thing. And uh, I think these cases are not so bad. These they are expandable and, and user serviceable and such. Yeah, as I thought, the size is exactly the same. I see it's already the hard drive cage thing. There isn't so much space as I already thought from the pictures. Using fully modular power supply in such tight cases is not ideal. Otherwise here you see the cable is just going away. That um, is certainly much more comfortable. As I said, this will most likely be our test lab power supply thing. Will that close in case I don't want to send this back? It almost fits. No, but it's it's slightly coming up here. I really wonder how it was listed as 2.5 inch that I didn't realize it's a height reduced 3.5 inch. Usually such kind of stuff doesn't happen to me, but whatever. Yeah, so this is my compact case recommendation for uh, the day. As long as they still sell it. They also changed the production over the years. The older version do not have paint here on this drive metal elements and uh, such kind of details they changed over the 10 year production run. I'm not sure how long they will still produce it. As I saw this is super tight, this fully modular stuff. Just to double check, I can try to screw it in. And that is the biggest benefit of this fully modular that you do not have all the cables that you do not need but only the two, three or four cables that you actually need for your build. Okay, it actually is maybe four millimeters more than I thought. So it should be possible to fit in. Just that it's really tight. As you see, you already need to play it a little bit Tetris to even get it in there. Actually it is possible and there are some more millimeters than I thought. I thought it's more rubbing on the metal that would be a little bit too dangerous in my opinion. So it's probably okay, just a little bit Tetris paint to puzzle in there. Actually as a little bit bonus material for today I will actually screw the modular power supply into this case. As you can see this is what I meant. You can see in this many years older case from seven years ago they did not paint the bare metal and uh, that's plain metal here. And as you can see, so this is this is a full server node. And as you can see here, some more cables. This is of course serial ATA. But here are some unused power cables. So I can also screw in the new nicer power supply into the server and use this not as nice, not modular power supply for the testing as it has a floppy and vintage Molex for more old-fashioned vintage ID and SCSI hard drives and CD-ROMs and such. And I can show you today with the modular power supply that it saves a little bit free style hanging cables in this build. Interesting, I think in the new case they do not have this bridge here anymore that is holding the power supply. So they actually saved one metal piece and which also blocks this whole area for modular power supplies actually. Quite some design changes over the years in this case. But I find it surprising that they produce this case so long given the fast changing PC market. As I said, it is possible to screw here two and a half inch drives into the CD-ROM area. 
So for those of you who never built a PC, just snap here this ATX slot I.O. panel goes in here, just snaps in. Then the motherboard, obviously CPU and fan. I can show this in detail in the next build video, memory and uh, fan connection, power supply. Here's the I.O. header for all the power button and standby LED and such. Maybe it's not the best recommendation to carry it on the CPU, fan and heating though. And then just be a little bit careful with this metal shielding there on the I.O. panel that this sits nicely. Then there are slightly different screws. The finer ones go into the mainboard and hard drives and the less fine threading usually goes into the other case parts. But by the time you do it the second time you know this screws and threading by heart anyway. Certainly less different screws than Apple is using in their machines where they usually typical using a wild mix of everything including different lengths. If you have the luxury to first install the power supply or remove the hard drive cage obviously it's easier to get the modular power supply in. Okay, so this we need to actually make a little bit space efficient here. PCI Express graphical power we don't need. Here are the serial ATA. So we save this kind of cable hanging around there and uh, only have this in there. So then maybe slightly nicer in the case. Okay, let's assemble the remaining hard disk cage. This goes here. Yeah, but it fits just, just there, not too bad. The only not so nice thing obviously is getting the screws here through. That is a little bit of a fiddling. Yeah, actually it helps a little bit this magnetic screwdriver. Yeah, that is what I meant with falling down. And this hard drive cage thing slides here in from the side and is fixed with two screws here at the end. These compact cases are of course not the most user friendly and easy to service and assemble, but certainly it is still 20 times better than the very difficult to service and such uh, user upgrade Apple products. And as I said, this is meant for a slim CD ROM or something, but I found it is possible to screw in here another two and a half SSD. If you are carefully willing, of course, uh, you need to make it a little bit working. Press a screw through the holes that otherwise don't fit and such, but it works for me. But this also means in general, be creative and make things fitting and working how you need them. This also has a benefit, it's free hanging here in the air because the holes are slightly higher so there's some air gap for cooling and air circulation and such. So power and serial ATA cables. I usually don't connect the front panel uh, USB on servers that people do not accidentally plug something or intentionally into the servers and I also usually do not connect the reset button just to avoid people accidentally pressing it just for stability sake. Yeah, actually it looks quite a bit cleaner and also certainly yields slightly better airflow. The only thing is this cable is a little bit less nice to work with here with the tight cabling. It's a little bit funny they have here, don't, can't even get the cables through here. I don't know why they have here this plastic protection if I uh, can't get even cables through there anyway. Yeah, this cable really are not, they look better but they are not so nice to bend here into shape, there is a little bit under pressure, I hope that doesn't have any negative long term effects. As so often better look with various functionality, I hope this doesn't desolder the power connector there. So connector wise, um, 
I saw already power is reset. We don't usually don't connect. Power switch was here the second. First was HDD. It's not so readable from here. Power LED. You need to look this up for your mainboard, but it's not so complicated to get the cables in. Just look up where it belongs and connect it. This is fan. Where, where, where was the fan? PCB made in China. It's a funny. Instead, that they write there something useful. Here at the I.O. header, they write their PCB made in China. Thank you very much. I would have preferred if this written where the buttons are connected to. So that's mostly it. I need to quickly check where the fan connector was. I don't see it right now. It was somewhere, somewhere where it's not so seeable. And then we plug it in and see that it hopefully still boots. Okay, the fan connector was actually next to the other fan connector and hard disk LED was at the front, just opposite to the power LED. So let's plug it in and see how that goes. Actually, I just realized a fully modular power supply doesn't have a power off switch. That is not so nice. Actually, turns out the build would not turn on. And the reason is I... Here is the second power connector and I naively assumed the second part of the ATX connector uh, would be a fit for this, but this was a wrong assumption. You see I also don't build PCs every day. Turns out we need this cable additionally that makes of course the build again slightly more cluttered. I also wonder, of course a little bit unfortunate chaos with this PC vendors and such with this fragmentation and this power and that power that when you don't do it every day lose a little bit of the overview and also that it fits in there and has different voltage. Yeah, that this is what you're here for on this channel to tinker and learn and learn from mistakes. And uh, yeah, so let's plug in this cable and put it all back together and yeah. But it's also unfortunate that, um, that it doesn't have a power switch there anymore. Although I think there should be enough space actually in there. This I really don't like that you can't emergency switch it off or also doesn't make it ideal. Initially I wanted to use this for tinkering, vintage builds and such, but if you don't have a power switch it's also a little bit uncomfortable for this test setup on the bench. With this kind of details I really wonder what the companies are thinking, especially as this modular one is more expensive to start with anyway, and then they can't afford the power button. It's a little bit strange. So and we are up and running. Still booting. Yeah, thanks God plugging in the wrong cable did not destroy it. With one more cable we don't save so much, but um, yeah, at least we tried it and uh, now this details for the future. Also that uh, I overlooked, I couldn't even imagine that the more expensive, more powerful, modular power supply does not come with a power switch anymore. I find it a little bit lazy. With this beginner mistake with this cable, you see I don't think I was vintage machines and PC building every day between the YouTube videos I usually write software. And uh, yeah, so I learned something, I hope you learned something. Of course, it's not the most powerful AMD Phantom 2 X6 from, I don't know, four years, five years ago. Soon we will replace the next generation with AMD Ryzen. We, we have been waiting for AMD Ryzen also to support the free market and avoid the total monopoly by Intel. This kind as we already have too many Intel machines from Apple that we don't buy anymore for other reasons. So the server stuff, we usually try to use AMD and we have been waiting for AMD Ryzen. We were also waiting for slightly better mini ITX ports we just wanted to order some, but now that AMD Ryzen 1.5 coming out next month, we will start the first build with those and then we will migrate to AMD Ryzen. Here, update on this coming then when we do this. And I hope you learned something from today's video. And don't forget to subscribe for all the next tinkering to come.